Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the PNY RTX 5070. At 550 US dollars, this is easily one of the more affordable GPUs that you actually can get your hands on these days. I ordered this a few days ago from Best Buy, I'll include a link in the description. So in full disclosure, you already know I wasn't furnished this card, uh, but rather purchased it. And the 5070 has gotten a lot of attention, both good and bad. Of course, when it was first announced, uh, the CEO of NVIDIA actually claimed it was going to be able to achieve 4090 uh, performance, in some cases eclipsing 4090 performance using AI. And well, that's both true and false, and something I'll get into not so much today, but anyone who actually believed that, well, I don't know what to tell you. Now, this card is a solid GPU if you understand what you're getting, again, at 550 US dollars. This really should not command any more than that. Do not pay more for a 5070 or a 5070 Ti, because after all, uh, this isn't an upgrade for many of you that have 4000 series cards. I think it's a solid move if you're coming from anything in the 3000 series, again, 3060, 3070 cards, uh, because it is a legitimate upgrade. Now, 12 gigs of RAM, video RAM, is really holding this card back along with other things, but that's the principal uh, element holding it back because when it comes to uh, gaming, you know, 1440p, you're going to be fine, but had they actually given it some more headroom, this really would have had a lot more going for it. But let me get it out of the box. Uh, for me personally, I think this is an ideal card for um, a smaller build, something whoop, going through uh, the paper rather than the plastic. Something that's really like, you know, a, a small form factor, I think is going to be very, very happy, even though this consumes more power than its 4070 uh, brethren. It does offer quite a bit uh, with regard to the improvements that the 5000 series brings to the table. So as long as you understand that 12 gig uh, ceiling with the VRAM, I think you can actually make good use of this card. But if you have something like a 4070 Ti, a 4070 Super, uh, this is kind of a sideways move in every single way. Uh, that's why I said 3000 series GPUs, it's a good move, but that's really going to be the majority of where it's going to make the most sense. One of the things I like about this generation, and I'm very critical of the 5000 series GPUs for anyone that doesn't know, is that the best thing NVIDIA did this gen, and really the only noteworthy one for me personally, is they've added 10-bit support, H.265, 422, which means that if, like me, you do more than game, content create, video editing, that is a big, big deal. And that's probably the only thing outside of DisplayPort 2.1 that I'm attracted to with the 5000 series GPUs because overall, they are pretty much top to bottom. This is the worst generation of NVIDIA GPUs ever. I'll probably end up doing a separate video about that because I have been a longtime supporter of NVIDIA. They've revolutionized the PC space and the world, whether you realize it or not. And they're still continuing to do so. But there's no question about it that this 5000 series launch, because of how much AI has earned NVIDIA, I do feel they've lost sight of the goal uh, for the moment. Hopefully that will get turned around. I think it will because you've got the same CEO, the same vision. It's just they've gotten a little bit too cash rich in the last few years, really the last year. So Again, the 10-bit support here, because it has its own decoder now on board, is awesome. Uh, for video editing, that is an absolute plus. But because this has, again, only the 12 gigs of VRAM, it actually requires more power uh, than its 4070 Ti counterpart. Again, you can't get those anymore, so we've got to be realistic about what's available when we make these comparisons. But this is definitely going to be one of the, I think, more affordable options. Again, AMD has arguably better GPUs, um, of course, that launched after this. Um, I doubt I'll end up seeing those, uh, but I just wanted to see what this guy was like. And again, at 550, I don't feel the burn, so to speak. I think the TI, if you can get your hands on a 5070 TI, that's another good direction to go because that is going to give you uh, a lot more performance. It's more like, you know, essentially very close to being 5080 level. But because I have a 4090, all of these cards are moot except for the 10-bit support presently. Now, when it comes to the I.O. here, you can see we've got HDMI 2.1. We've got our DisplayPort 2.1 as expected. So I probably will just play with this to see how it handles uh, video 
uh, editing because from a gaming perspective, you know, this is going to be great for 1440p. I've been gaming in 4K res for 10 years. So that doesn't appeal to me. But let's see. I'm not going to run this as a secondary GPU uh, <laughs> in my new build for anyone that was wondering. That is not happening. But I do think this card makes a lot of sense for people, again, on a budget who want to be able to build something new and don't want to get gouged. There is our power adapter, the power cable for the GPU. And that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else in here to show. But I'm curious what all of you think of these uh, 5070 GPUs. Again, a lot of you thought that these were going to be game changers and believed that they would somehow achieve 4090 uh, capability. I knew as soon as that came out of, uh, you know, the, the press wire, it was total crap. And uh, reminded me of Apple every time they would pretend that their chips could do what, you know, 90, you know, 4090 or 3090s could do, which was total marketing crap. I mean, they used to do that when they didn't even have the same software uh, to be able to run their benchmarks. It was just, you know, nonsense at its finest. And so to see NVIDIA take that turn, I was not happy. But at the same time, you know, the 5090 is still the most powerful GPU on the market. AMD's moved away from making cards in that class. I totally understand why. This is a very mainstream GPU that I think has a place, unfortunately, you know, outside of AI and that 10-bit support. It doesn't offer a lot more when it comes to gaming, uh, but that doesn't mean that it isn't still going to satisfy about 90, at least 90% of the gaming world these days since most still don't game in 4K. Food for thought. Um, and PNY, by the way, is a great manufacturer. Anyone that's wondering, I've, I've had their cards in the past, never had an issue. I mean, they, they are a solid uh, manufacturer, no question about it. So it'll be interesting. We'll see what this thing can do. Uh, but any questions or comments, I'm interested in what all of you are thinking about the 5070. Are you considering it? After all, it is available. Uh, so are 5080s here and there, but that card makes absolutely no sense financially. I'm not saying this is a great value. It's not. AMD is still where the value lives for now. Uh, but if you need a GPU that's solid and has all of the latest uh, capabilities from NVIDIA, that is the box this does check. Beyond that, again, the gaming chops wish that it could deliver more. And what it's able to make up for with AI, well, if you know anything about uh, DLSS, then you know that the AI is giving you more frames, but you're losing detail in the process. And that's not something I'm interested in at all. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them at that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.